Hello, welcome to another session in Consumer Mathematics. Here, we are going to learn about consumer loans today. So, it's an outline. We are going to see how to determine the payments for add-on loan. We are going to compute finance charges on a credit card using the unpaid balance method. And we are going to use the average daily balance method to compute credit card charges. Let's begin with add-on interest method. Let's say you're buying furniture for your apartment, for which you pay using payments. Then this means you are taking out an installment loan. Loans having a fixed number of payments are called closed-ended credit agreements or installment loans. Each payment we pay with equal amount is called an installment. The interest charged on a loan is often called a finance charge. Let's look into the add-on interest method how the monthly payment is being charged. So the finance charge here is calculated using the simple interest formula where the interest is principal times the rate, interest rate times the duration. So the monthly payment is going to be given by the amount of the loan, that is the principal that you had, plus the interest going to be computed for that loan amount all of that divided by the number of months you're going to take to pay off that loan. So in other words, the amount of the loan, I is the interest due on the loan and is the number of monthly payments. As the name suggests, we are adding on the interest to the loan amount before determining the payments. So this is called add-on interest method. Let's start with one example. Let's say you are purchasing a TV for your apartment which is worth of $780. You take out an add-on loan for two years at a rate of 11%. What will be your monthly payment? So in order to use the formula, we need to first calculate the interest on the loan itself. So we will use the simple interest formula I is equal to PRT where the P is going to be 780. Interest rate is 11 percentage which means for the computation we use 0 0.11 the decimal value and the duration is in years so 2 years which will be $171.60. Now we need to figure out the monthly payment. In order to do so, we need to add the interest into the loan itself. So the total payment is purchase price plus the interest, which will be 951.6. To find the monthly payments, we need to figure out how many months we are going to pay off. So it's two years, two times 12, 24 months. So the monthly payment will be P plus I divided by N, which will be $39.00. 65 cents approximately. Now, recall the loans having fixed number of payments as closed ended credit agreement. That means, for example, buying furniture and paying off monthly with installment. What happens if the loans with varying amount of payments? They are called open ended credit. For example, you buy gas using your credit card. So there might be more than purchasing gas in your credit card balance. You might be making more transaction using your credit card. So at the end of the month, the credit card company is charged for your monthly payment will differ depending on the amount you owe for that month in total. So this is a varying amount of payment. So that's called open-ended credit. So in this 
particular section, we learn how do the credit card companies charge for the amount you borrowed. The first method is unpaid balance method. So here the interest is based on the previous month's balance. And again it uses the simple interest formula I is equal to P of T. Principal times the rate times the duration in years. So what is the principal in this case? The principal amount is going to be previous month's balance plus previous month's finance charge plus the transaction you had throughout this month which will be purchases, returns, payments. So if it is purchased it will be added, returns, it will be subtracted and the payments will be subtracted. So that will be the principal and the rate is the annual interest rate. The duration is now it is for the month so it will have to be in month period so t has to be in the year uh, year so t will be 1 over 12. So let's begin with the first example for this part. So assume your annual interest rate for the credit card you owe is 13 percentage you have an unpaid balance at the beginning of the last month which was 480 since then you purchased 420 dollars and payment made of 150 dollars the question here is using the unpaid balance method find your credit card bill and then what will be your finance charge for the next month so first of all to answer this question let's mark down all the charge is going to be included into the principal in the simple interest formula. So the P is going to be combined with previous month's balance that is 480 and what is the finance charge for the previous month that is using the simple interest formula I is equal to PRT. So 480 times 0.13 times 112 which is $5.20. And the purchases made here are 120. There are no returns, but the payments made is 150. So let's combine them all together to find the capital P. So we have 480 plus 520, 5.20. And purchases made that will be added 120. No returns. The payments will be subtracted. So we have $455.20. That's the answer for part A. Part B asks you to find the finance charge for the next month balance. So this will be the outstanding balance for, balance for the next month. So we will use the simple interest formula again. And we will find the finance charge which will be $4.93. Let's do one more example to get familiar with this unpaid balance method. Now assume you have an outstanding balance from the last month, $820, annual interest rate is 11%, you purchased goods for $230, your returns were $20 and payment is $300. Same parts of questions, you are going to find the credit card bill for this month and finance charge for the next month. So let's find the capital P that means the bill for this month so previous month's balance plus finance charge plus purchases made minus returns minus payments previous month's balance is 820 finance charge will be from that 820 times the 11 percentage that means 0 0.11 times 112 with the finance charge purchases made is 230 we will add that and the returns was $20 so we'll subtract and the payment was 300 so we'll subtract that amount so in total we will have $737.52 as a bill for the this month now what is the finance charge for the next month that means using this outstanding balance we can find using we can use the simple interest formula to find the next month's finance charge which will be $6.76. So if you look into these two examples, you 
could notice there is a easy way to make it beneficial for you which is you make large purchases early in the month using your credit card and pay it off just before the billing date in which case your finance charge for the next month will be less amount provided your credit card company uses the unpaid balance method now let's look into another example paying off a student loan let's say you have a student loan debt of 15000 simple interest rate at 18 percentage so in order to reduce the debt as quickly as possible from the next month onwards you're going to start paying off 900 dollars per month towards the loan so after your first month payment how much you will actually owe on your loan so even though you are paying 900 dollars not the total 900 is going to go towards your loan because you have interest to take care as well. So that's what we are going to see here with this example. So what is the interest at the end of the month? Using the simple interest formula, we can find it. Your principal here is going to be 15,000. Interest rate is 18 percentage and per month. So that means 112. You will have the interest as 225 at the end of the first month. You are paying $900 out of which 225 is going to go towards the interest so the rest of the amount 675 is the amount going to go towards the loan that you owe so you are paying only 675 towards the loan you owe so your outstanding balance now will be fourteen thousand three hundred and twenty five dollars so what is the summary you get out of it so better if you pay off as much as your outstanding balance to avoid paying large amount of interest right and be aware of the annual interest rate when you borrow money the annual interest rate is also important to know this let's do one more example with paying off a student loan now the principal amount you have as a loan is 42,000 the annual interest rate is simple interest rate 21 percent first payment you are making on the loan is 1200 how much it will go towards the interest how much will go towards the principal and how much will go towards the amount you owe in the loan so same procedure as the previous example first we need to find the finance charge at the end of the first month so the principal amount 42000 times the interest times 112 so we will get the finance charge which will be 735 you are paying 1200 so out of the 1200 the interest is going to be 735 dollars towards the interest out of the 1200 how much is going to go towards the principal that means 1200 minus 735 which is 465 dollars how much you're still going to owe that will be 42,000 minus 465 is 41,535 dollars so this is with unpaid balance method examples now we'll move on to the next method average daily balance method which is a little more complicated method and one of the most common method used by the credit card companies it computes the finance charge based on the balance in the account for each day of the month so let's see the procedure so we will add the outstanding balance for your account for each day of the month and then we'll divide the total by the number of days in the month to find the average of the daily balance then we will use the simple interest formula to find the finance charge yeah the principal will be the total balance we had divided by the number of days and r is the interest rate annual interest rates and the d t will be in terms of years so we will have to have the number of days divided by the total number of days in any year that is 365 
So let's begin with one example. Suppose the beginning of August, your credit card balance is four hundred and eighty dollars, and the annual interest rate is thirteen percent. And assume during August the following transactions are made into your account. You charge thirty dollar for your mobile plan on August eleventh. You charge twenty eight dollars for some online purchases on August seventeenth. And you make a payment of hundred and fifty dollars on August twenty second. And you charge around sixty two dollars on for gasoline on August twenty eighth. Question here is use the average daily balance method to compute the finance charge that will appear on your September credit card statement. So here we need to count the number of days in between each transaction. We need to keep on adding the total of the amount, and then we will evaluate the finance charge. So let's make a table. So let's. Place our transaction on the first column. So balance on August first. The amount is four hundred and eighty dollars. The next transaction we know is the first transaction on August eleventh, which is a charge of thirty dollar. How many days in between first and eleventh? Ten days. First August first through August tenth. So ten times the balance is four hundred and eighty. So we have four thousand eight hundred dollars. That daily balance total. Now, when we have charged thirty dollar, that means we need to add the thirty, which will be four eighty plus thirty, five hundred and ten. Now, how many days we are going to have the five hundred and ten dollars in our account charge? So we need to move on to the next. Transaction, which is a charge of twenty-eight dollars on August seventeenth. So, how many days in between eleventh and seventeenth? So that's eleventh to sixteenth. So six days. So six times that amount five hundred and ten, which will be three thousand and sixty. Now we have twenty-eight dollars as a charge. So we need to add that twenty-eight to this five hundred and ten. Five hundred ten plus twenty eight is five hundred thirty eight. Let's move on to the next transaction, which is a payment of one hundred and fifty. So on twenty second. So how many days in between seventeenth and twenty second? We need to figure that out. That will be five days. So five times five hundred and thirty eight. That's many days. We maintain the balance of five hundred thirty eight. That's what it means. So it will be dollar two thousand six hundred ninety. Now we are making a payment, which means we need to subtract in the next part. So 538 minus 150, which is 388. So now we will move on to the next transaction, which is a charge on August 28th. So how many days in between 22nd and 28th? That is simply six days. So for these six days, you maintained the balance of three hundred and eighty-eight. So that will be in total of two thousand three hundred twenty-eight. And we have the charge on twenty-eighth, and there's no more charges or no more transaction. August has thirty-one days, and we need to add because it is a charge. So we need to add that amount, which will give us the total of four hundred fifty in between twenty-eighth and thirty-first. We have four days. So the total will be thousand eight hundred. Now we need to get the grand total, which will be adding out all of these daily balances together, which will be fourteen thousand six hundred and seventy-eight. So this is the first step. Now let's move on to the second step. Divide this total grand total amount by the number of days in the month. So August has thirty-one days. By that, so you will get average daily balance, which is four hundred seventy-three dollars and forty-eight cents. Now we need to figure out the finance charge. That's the question, actually. So we have the principal amount, which is four hundred seventy-three point four eight, and we know the annual interest rate, which is thirteen percentage. And for the T, we need to make sure to multiply by the number of days in the month divided by. Three six five. So with this, your finance charge will be five dollars and twenty.
23 cents. Now, let's do one more example to get practice. So, consider the month April, annual interest rate is given as 12 percentage. And the following table gives the details of the charges, transactions. So starting balance is 220. So let's look into the problem. So from 1st to 8th, we have 7 days. So the balance we maintain for those 7 days will be 7 times 220. So 1,540 in total. We are making a payment of 120 on our April 8th. So that means we need to subtract 120. So we are maintaining this $100 from April 8th to April 15th, right? So seven days again in between. So for seven days, we are maintaining the balance of 700. Now from 15, we are making a charge. That means we need to add the charge 100 plus 28, 128. Under 20th, we are maintaining the same balance. So that means five days in between. So 5 times 128 which is $640. April has 30 days so until 30th we are maintaining the balance of 128 plus 72 which is $200. So 11 days $200 so $2200. We need to figure out the grand total which will be $5080. We need to find the average daily balance which means 5080 divided by the number of days in the month which is 30 for April so we will have $169.33 now the finance charge P times R times T simple interest formula so 163.9.33 and 12 percentage annual interest rate times the number of days in the month 30 divided by 365 which will give us $1.67 so here you learn two methods, unpaid balance method and average daily balance method. So you can take a question and compare using the both methods, whichever is good for you or whichever is more good for credit card companies, depending on which perspective you are looking into. So this will be the end of the consumer loss. Yes. Thank you.